See, that's the fun about re retirement and doing volunteer work. You're there because you want to, not because you have to. That was Jesus Baragan. I'm your host, Jeff Hunt. Welcome to Storied San Francisco, a weekly podcast where San Franciscans from all walks of life share their stories, and you get to know your neighbors. In this podcast, Jesus picks up where he left off in part one with his work at the VA. From there, he went to Child Protective Services in San Francisco, where he ran into more issues of discrimination that he helped to expose and fix. After his retirement, he met David Campos and ended up volunteering at Campos' office at City Hall. When Hilary Ronan, our guest this season in episode 19, took over from Campos, she kept Jesus on. He reflects on what the coronavirus pandemic means for humanity, and Jesus ends the podcast with his love letter to the city. Here's Jesus. I left the VA in 90. Oh, so you were there... Ten, yeah, uh -huh. nine or ten years. Almost huh? ten years. Okay, and I would have been director, but uh, again, the guy, the second guy in D.C. in command, who's also a Chicano, he denied me that promotion. He set it up so I didn't get it. So I sued the VA. Okay, I filed a complaint. Awesome. Okay, and and the reason why it's so significant is because at that time, federal law did not have a title for sexual orientation. Right. They had race, religion or something. But but they had but you know, something culture. You know how it's believed that among the Mexican culture it's like a very anti gay, the machoism and all that. Mm -hmm. So the VA person, HR person, she couldn't come out right out, but she threw the hint and it was mm -hmm. up to me to to, to figure it out. Hint. Yeah, yeah. And you know what I got him? cultural discrimination okay that in the latino community that thing is frowned upon yeah so that so i won and when would this have been 90 91 i won in uh uh 86 87 oh. oh okay yeah and see and and i knew that that i would not go any further uh, with that because i had rocked the boat and won and so you were suing them for for denying you the raise that discrimination well, the while po the position the position the promotion see if if that manager hadn't quit when he did mm -hmm. i would have gotten it right because he was in my corner but you sued them while you continued to work there yeah wow and then we had a training a regional training in san francisco mm -hmm. and the guy that blocked it he tried to shake my hand you know how people sent around yeah. he put out his hand i got pow hit it and walked away <laughs> yeah, exactly uh-huh too late too late sucker so uh yeah i've always been a fighter <laughs> uh, yeah i can tell and That's, uh so what was after you said uh, 90 or so you left the va uh-huh so then then but i and i had fought the city too and the latinos for affirmative action see and then i went to work for cps child protective service mm -hmm. okay in in the city in san francisco okay. and i became san francisco's first Spanish-speaking supervisor for a Spanish-speaking unit. I'm the oh, first. Wow. And that happened in 93, what, 20 years late? Yeah. Oh, yeah. So what I did over there, I formed a Latino task force with uh, uh, co-workers from all the various countries. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, how to improve the services mm -hmm. uh, uh, for that population. Right. Translating forms. You know, I found a form, mm -hmm. and I hope this turned into a class action s lawsuit. I know Santa Clara County was thinking about it. I found on the shelves the Spanish translation being different and incorrect mm -hmm. from the English. See, under state law, the parents are given up to 18 months to get their kids back. Okay. And the department will pay for what they call reunification services. Mm -hmm. They give you a, bus, a fast pass to get on the bus. Uh, they pay for your therapy, your parenting classes, substance abuse classes, uh, whatever. And if the parents don't comply within 18 months, what the court does, they terminate 
the reunification services. Mm. Even if the kid is, uh, a guardianship is done with other relatives or mm -hmm. an adoption or whatever, uh, at 18 months, you know, no, the, the city's not going to pay, the court's not going to pay. Right. You didn't take advantage of it, so, you know. The, the Spanish version said, no, the English version said, your your child is uh, is in in permanent uh, placement. Uh, your reunification services are terminated. Mm -hmm. The Spanish version says your kid's gone into foster care, and it says um, I think it said uh, not reunification services are terminated, but like you can't even see your kid. Mm. Your visit. So a lot of Spanish speaking parents who thought that uh, that they can't see their kid, that they lost it, stopped. Right. So a lot of kids were never were returned to their parents because of that misspelled. And that can't be an accident. And it took me six months to get it off the shelves. I told them they're still, and, uh, and I found that, you know. And, and how many, how many, before I, I, I found it, how many of those letters went out right statewide and it's already i have to imagine i don't have children i'm obviously a, a white guy i have to imagine it's already hard enough having your children taken away from you oh yeah because of something you've done and yeah. then to find out later that because that, of that a lot of kids were lost right were In never returned to their parents because of that uh misspelling so how exactly did you go about getting that change uh, like that we were, uh, I had brought it up to my supervisor mm -hmm. for six months. They were still there. Finally, we had a visit from state officials and I went and got one and told him about it and he immediately removed him. I'm just thinking that couldn't have been an, ac an accident. No, no, no. The, the, you know, there's so much crap that goes on. Right. right. So, uh, <laughs> well, do you want, if we can dwell on the crap. For sure, okay. but I, I also want to hear a little more about about your life. So, mm, about my life. Yeah. Okay. So, and then, and so then what we'll, was after what was after CPS? After CPS, uh, see what happened was they were going to open up another Spanish speaking unit. I was this was the only one. Mm -hmm. I'm the only Spanish uh, Spanish speaking supervisor, mm -hmm. and they had a guy in mind. They were going to, it was for him. It was intended for him. Mm -hmm. Because, you know, he had, uh, uh, he hadn't applied for it, but it was meant for him. And the plan was for him to apply and he was going to get it. Mm -hmm. Well, nobody thought that I would apply. Right. And by civil service law rules, it's what you call a lateral transfer. Right. I'm the only Spanish speaking supervisor here. I just want to move to over here, so, so you, you know. Obviously qualified. Well, I was told I wasn't qualified right. because I, I, I blew their plans. Mm. I went around the department asking about more. Nobody knew anything. Mm -hmm. one, one, one woman said, well, it's not in my shop, yet she was on my oral board. Mm. The line bitch. <laughs> Excuse me. Anyway, so... Um, so uh, they rejected me. They interviewed me. Th uh, I, was, uh, I was told I was not qualified. Then they interviewed this other person. They turned her down. And then they ended up offering it to this white woman who spoke Spanish. They, she accepted. But I heard that uh, Latinas uh, got her in the elevator and said, Honey, are we going to make life miserable for you? So then she backed off. She said she don't want it. So then they were going to offer it to this male friend of hers, white, who also spoke Spanish, but he said, nope, <laughs> I don't want to touch it because of what his friend had told him. Right. So then uh, then they they found out they had a lawsuit. I could sue them okay. uh -huh, for the way they went about it. So then they offered it to me. Okay. And I told them, I don't take salty seconds. I don't accept salty. I don't want it. I'm not interested. Salty seconds. I don't want it. 
So they ended up giving it to the Peruvian woman who they had already turned down, and she took it. <laughs> okay. Hey, at least she spoke Spanish. Yeah. And then by that time, I knew, no, I'm done here. So I, uh, I resigned. I retired on my birthday, my actual birthday. We had a going away party at Don Ramon's. Had you worked? Um, had you worked in City Hall for a supervisor before you started with Hillary? Or yeah. Okay. Can we hear about some yeah. of that? What happened was, and I have to kind of backtrack. Sure. I was volunteering for Dolores Street Community Services, and I find out that they're going to open a, a gay shelter. You know Jazzy's place? I don't. Dolores Street is for, it's for, elder, it's for uh, uh, transgenders, uh, gays. Okay. Uh-huh. And anyway, so one day I'm having... I'm having a lunch, you know, and the director, executive directors at the table also having her lunch. So we start talking about this. And then I tell her that when I actually went to the shelter, that all the gay uh, guys would tell me how they liked coming to Dolores Street because they felt welcomed, no harassment. Mm. So I'm telling her this and she goes, oh, would you be willing to say that in front of the planning commission? And I go, sure. And she and I so when do they meet? Today. <laughs> <laughs> so so we go to City Hall and that's when I met David Campos. Oh. I, I, I knew he represented the mission. I had heard he was gonna run for the assembly, but that's when I met David Campos, you know, for the first time. So we went to the planning commission meeting and sitting there listening to David talk. That's when I made up my mind. I'm going to volunteer for his campaign. Okay. So that's the what, assembly campaign, or huh? when for he assembly. ran for assembly, or uh, for assembly. Okay. So that was about 2014. 14. 14. 14. Okay. Well, they must have liked what they saw, <laughs> because the campaign manager, uh, after the campaign was over, about two weeks later, two and a half weeks later, he calls me here at home, and that's when he asked me if I would. Uh, 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 volunteer at City Hall to be office manager for Campos. For Campos, because he still had, I think, two year, two more years, two more years to serve. Okay. Uh huh. And uh, and then I, uh, he started to get apologetic. You, well, we can't pay you anything, and I said, I'm glad you guys aren't paying it because I want to do this, but mm. I want to be there. Mm -hmm. See, that's the fun about re retirement mm -hmm. and doing volunteer work. You're there because you want to, not because you have to. Right. So I did that. And, and your uh, reward is the work. It's not a paycheck. Yeah, very yeah. rewarding, the work. Yeah. So so you were the, you said the office manager? Or yeah. Or uh, the last two years of David Campos's tenure? Yeah, right? with him. Okay. And, uh, and then Hillary asked me uh, if I, if I plan to stay. Mm -hmm. Um. Did you do any work with Hillary's campaign when she ran the yeah. first time? Uh huh. Okay. Uh, she asked me if, if I was going to stay on, and I said, "Well, only if you want me to." Mm -hmm. And she goes, "Sure." So I stayed on, and then time for her campaign, and uh, I basically performed the way I did on Campos's campaign, like uh, I would buy food sometimes for the everybody. Mm -hmm. Uh, I went there and everything, uh, helped Hillary with a donation, everything. Um, and uh, I was there at six in the morning, election day and mm -hmm. everything. And I, and I kept telling her, play on the motherhood, play on the motherhood. Mm, right. Because being a father and being the mother, it's not the same. Right. So eventually she did <laughs> do the motherhood. Okay. And, uh, yeah, and and uh, Hillary won and, and it everything. Worked. Yeah. So did you meet Hillary in David's office first? Yeah, that's where you guys. She first was met. the legis okay. uh, the the chief of staff. Right. Right. Okay. Uh huh. And and we used to make fun of it because I got to meet Hillary's parents. Okay. We heard a little bit about them when she was on the podcast. Mm -hmm. Let's hear from you. About yeah. <laughs> and uh, and I see I've al I've also been been known as the cheerleader. Okay. With David mm -hmm. and with Hillary, I would make up yells. Oh, actual cheers. Actual cheers. Oh, okay. From our high school days. Yeah. But I would change the words. <laughs> For example, you know, there was, it says, 
Victory, victory, that's our cry. V I C T O R Y. Mm -hmm. That's the way we spell it. Here's the way we yell it. Victory, victory for the high school. Mm -hmm. Well, I changed that. Uh, I changed it. Hillary, Hillary, that's our cry. H I L L A R Y. That's the way you spell it. Here's the way you yell it. Hillary, Ronan, rah, rah, rah. Yes. And, you know, and I would make those yells. And then uh, uh, when David Campos, I remember being on, on the Carnaval or something, parade or something, mm -hmm. or Cinco de Mayo, and I would do, I would do yells. You guys don't know Spanish? Uh, huh? well, Piquito, okay. Yeah. Well, you know, during the the Gallo boycotts ag against uh, uh, Yellow uh, boycotts the grapes, mm -hmm. uh, Cesar Chavez, mm -hmm. there was a yell in Spanish: "Huelga seguro, y el gallo duro duro." Okay. Uh, a, a strike, yes, to Gallo hard, hard, hard kind okay. of thing. That's the translation. So I would just change that to. To Campos Seguro y al otro duro duro, <laughs> you know. Ah, so I, I, I awesome. have a reputation of being the cheerleader. That's awesome. So if we ever want a cheer for <laughs> this podcast, I'll make one out. Yeah, I'll make do. one out. <laughs> um, Jesus. So I guess, is, is there anything else in your time in Hillary's office that you want to talk about before? Because oh. you were still volunteering before or the until, pandemic. until shelter in place, right? Yeah, Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday. Anything else you want to talk about from that time? Well, I really, I really like it. Really enjoyed it uh, because of, of the of the uh, we everyone got along so well. See, I'm not in, I'm not into a title thing. Mm -hmm. Like, even though I know I'm the office manager, but that's not how how should I say, how I ran that office. Right. Uh, I did it where everyone was equal, the, all the interns, the volunteers. Not a hierarchy. Just, yeah. Uh, just roles. Everyone has roles. Yeah, like, uh, uh, like um, it got to where I, I p appointed a co, a assistant okay. office manager. Why should I do everything myself? <laughs> right. You know, and yeah. so she, she does... Uh, she gets the uh, resumes and stuff, okay. and uh, she'll even interview the person. Sometimes we do it together, but and then I do the training. Okay. So yeah, I mean, and uh, and the various volunteers, you know, they w we work equally. Awesome. Like I said, I d I don't I don't I mean I can have that title, but so what? Yeah. Are you working at all? Because she's running again. Are you working at all on her campaign this fall? Uh, I had a conversation with her about that. And uh, she's literally running unopposed. I thought I saw something about that. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, the other person is like not even known. Yeah. So Hillary's going to get a second term. Awesome. And, uh, you know, we were su she was supposed to kick it off at uh, some park. But that got canceled because of the pandemic. Mm. So she's going to run a very low campaign. Okay. And I just let her know that if she wanted some donations to call me up. Right. Better to save the uh, Yeah, because see, see uh, I used to buy candy for the office mm -hmm. and good candy. I want to work for you. <laughs> and I used to buy snacks awesome. for the office. Mm -hmm. You know, also, I mean, I was spending about. At least maybe a hundred a week on that. Wow. Or every, you know. So, uh, and then my lunch, sometimes I would treat someone else to lunch. Mm -hmm. So I'm, I'm not doing that. So I'm, so I'm, I'm kind saving of saving a lot of, a lot of, a lot of money. Of money. <laughs> yeah. But I've increased my donations. Like I donate to Planned Parenthood, yeah. St. Jude uh, Children's Research Hospital, mm -hmm. uh, Farming Hope mm -hmm. to Feed the Homeless. Mm -hmm. Uh, American Red Cross, City Team, you know, like the free food places. Right. Do you think if um, City Hall were to open back up uh, anytime soon, do you think you would go back or? Well, here's the way I think I'm thinking. Since we are volunteers and that at, at our age, I think we will be the last group to go back. 
to be considered to be go- because we're in the high risk group mm-hmm. and we're volunteers and I'm sure that they will require testing for anyone that right. returns to city hall you know uh, your workplace yeah. so we may never go back okay here's what I think we have this pandemic and I I really believe it's for a reason a very good reason I don't think of much I don't have a high opinion of humans mm-hmm. uh, because I think they're very destructive. They're very destructive, aggressive, uh, uh, suspicious, untrusting. See, I remember in philosophy class in college, uh, we're talking about why are we at the top of this whole change? And, and the professor said that the experts that be many years ago determined that we have the ability to reason this highly developed brain of ours we're able to reason because by comparison we're inferior to as other species but because we have the ability to reason what we lack we build the very futon you're sitting on humans built it this apartment house, okay, uh, we, we don't have a thick uh, coat of fur to keep us warm, so we re- incur conditioning, uh, mm-hmm. cooler. We can't run like the horse, so we have automobiles. Mm-hmm. We can't fly like the birds, so we build planes. Mm-hmm. So c- uh, fast forward to this pandemic. Mm-hmm. See, this is what those scientists, uh, doctors are doing. They're trying to figure it out. And, wh- and, and humans w- were destroying Mother Earth, mm-hmm. polluting it, the air, you, you know. They were, which makes no sense. Why, why do humans destroy the very thing that sustains us? It makes no sense. So Mother Nature had to step in and put a stop to it. I so so that's you. the way I see it. Yeah. Now, here is the sad part. We have the ability to reason, but we can't reason. Bec- uh, we can't reason putting uh, putting people before profit. Right. No, this is going to happen when when the world puts profit before people, mm-hmm. and 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 Mother Nature had to st- uh, stop it, and she threw this. Look, our our the the atmosphere is clear, clean because there's not all those cars on the freeway, and we're slowly going back to that. Did we learn a damn thing? No. It go, we're so destructive, you know, and that's the part. I really like it when, when I see people helping each other. That's the way it's supposed to be. But people here are blinded. See, I don't like money. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. I don't. I only use it because I have to. Right. Uh, I live in a society, a world that does it, but I don't like money. It has divided up into the have and have nots, mm-hmm. the snotty upper classes and all that. Mm-hmm. Uh, uh, the more of it you have, the better you live. That's right. why th- all money has done is cr- created classes of people and the have and have nots. Mm-hmm. So and there's a lot more have nots than so there are haves. Yeah. So why? So why? Why would I want all that money? See, I'm not a. I'm not the type of person that depends on what's out here to define me. Right. It's in here. Right. And that thing never goes, uh, uh, is lost. Right. But for people that have the ability to reason and they choose to uh, destroy the earth for money, mm-hmm. when anytime you put profit before people, this is going to happen. And so I'm glad Mother Nature put a stop to it. Mm-hmm. She had to step in and put a stop. And not only that, but when <laughs> someone like Donald Trump, she had to put a stop to him. When, when I was at San Jose State in political science, I wrote a paper on the downfall of the United States. Okay. And the teacher gave me a big fat A, and he wanted me to take uh, Part B the following semester. And no, I was already guaranteeing me an A. Hmm. So I asked him, why do you want me to take your class? Because you're a thinker, because you're a fighter. <laughs> All right. <laughs> my, my approach, my reason for involvement, it's, a, it's all about a quality of life. Uh, for example, part of my activism, a person here works so hard all their lives. They pay their taxes, 
And then when they get old, there's like literally nothing for them. Uh, most of them just have their social security check. Uh, their medications, sometimes they have to pay a lot for them. Mm-hmm. When you have to choose between a, a food on the table or, you know, and, and uh, paying your rent as opposed to your medications, yeah. that's sad. Yeah. And And I don't think that this country takes care of its seniors the way they're supposed to. You know, uh, if if I had my way, well, you know, I'm a socialist. I don't like our system of government. And uh, people tremble at that word. You know, we have so many socialist programs, just don't use that word. Yep. Like, you know, uh, Medicare, mm-hmm. Social Security. Mm-hmm. You, did you know that Germany had Social Security in the 1800s? We don't get it until 1934. Right. It's, well, a, it's ridiculous. And, you know, and, and I realize that people really don't know anything about it. Remember, I was in the party, so right. I feel I learned what it is. Mm-hmm. You know, it's just, uh, okay, like, let me tell you something. Um, I would never, ever, ever buy a house. Mm-hmm. And I'll tell you why. Because it's never yours. Right. The, uh, if, if you don't pay property taxes, they take it from you. Mm-hmm. If you want to add another room, you got to get a permission mm-hmm. and pay for it. Mm-hmm. Uh, so, uh, yeah, yeah. and, and then there's money. eminent domain. Mm-hmm. You know what the, what ownership really means in this country? That? that you can hopefully turn around and sell it for a profit. For a profit. Mm-hmm. And I had a house that in San Jose that my parents, uh, I inherited. Mm-hmm. So I had to pay property taxes, mm-hmm. house insurance, mm-hmm. and you can't deduct house insurance. Uh, so I so, and and I kept the house because my father and you know I have uh, two brothers that ended up on heroin and alcohol and all that. I'm the first high school graduate of seven children, oh, wow. and let alone gone to go to college. college yeah. And then the jobs I've held in their wildest dreams, right. they would never think that they could uh, get you know. So in other words, I'm Mr. High Achiever in my family, mm-hmm. and uh, they kind of had me on a pedestal. Uh, uh, which I never liked, you know. I'm the youngest. Oh well. You know, uh, it got to the point where they were always asking me mm-hmm. advice, kind of thing. Mm-hmm. Our kind of theme with the podcast for this year is love letters to the city, love letters to San Francisco. Do you want to tell us what your love, love letter? letter to the city would be at this point? You've lived here thirty, almost forty-five, forty-three or four some years I love what do you love about San Francisco what keeps you here oh San Francisco has a vibrancy it has a pulse all its own and uh, it's it's just it's just it's just a city where things happen you know Uh, it's a tourist town it's beautiful and uh, yeah it has a pulse all its own Love letter to San Francisco. Love what would it say? You 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 had you had some beautiful things to say already. I mean, yeah. Again, it's that vibrancy. It's 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 that it's a very tolerant, liberated city. Mm-hmm. I mean, I, I basically came up as a gay man to party, mm-hmm. to let my hair down. Mm-hmm. You know, the job was only guaranteed for six months, mm-hmm. and I'm still here. That was in 1975. And uh, I'm going to stay here um, because I told Hillary, you know, I'm committed to her for four more years. Mm -hmm. So as soon as that's over, my plan is to go live in Yonville at the veterans home. Okay. As soon as Hillary is done with supervisor, oh, she better not run for nothing else. (laughs) (laughs) And, uh, and And my, you know, health permitting. You know, at my age, I'm not out there at 8 o'clock at night. I'm too old. I don't go to the bars really anymore, except yeah. uh, the early beer bust on Sundays at the Eagle. Oh, yeah. And, uh, you know, for me, it's a time gone by. Mm-hmm. Uh, I have an old saying that I tell to everybody. Don't let your youth pass you by, but don't destroy your future. 
That was Jesus Baragan. Check back next week when we'll hear from Dave the Butcher Budworth. Music for Storied San Francisco is by Otis McDonald. Photography is by Michelle Kilfeather. The show is hosted and produced by me. Michelle and I have produced more than 120 episodes over the last three years, and you can find them all over at our website, storiedsf.com. We're on Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook, as well as just about everywhere you can listen to podcasts. Please subscribe to stay up to date on all the content we publish. And if you have any feedback for us, or you just want to say hi, our email is storiedsf at gmail.com. Thanks for listening. Stay strong, stay safe, and stay healthy. Thank you.